The Lavochkin Gorbunov Gutkov Leg 3 was a single engine Soviet fighter. It was one of the backbones of the Soviet Air Force during the Great Patriotic War. Development began in 1938 under the name of I-301, with the main goal of replacing the evergreen I-16. Due to the shortage of light alloys and steel in the Soviet Union, it was designed to be predominantly made of wood. More precisely, it was made of Delta Drevzina, a special chemically improved plywood that gave it a high degree of resilience and fire resistance. As it placed a very low strain on strategic materials and promised good performance, the project quickly became popular. The prototype was designated Lag 1 and flew for the first time on March 30, 1940, but unfortunately it became clear that it was underpowered and overweight. In addition, it exhibited less than ideal flying characteristics and demanded a higher than average degree of piloting skill. The design team tried to improve upon the Lag 1 by reducing its weight and making it easier to fly, and after several modifications the Lag 3 was created. Unfortunately, despite the design team's best intentions, the Lag 3 was still difficult to fly. It had a tendency to enter spins when doing steep turns, it would stall suddenly, and the landing gear was also quite brittle. The Lag 3 was also underpowered. As its claim of M105P engine could only produce 1050 horsepower, which wasn't enough for the fighter's actual weight. This engine was also prone to oil leaks. Other issues that were common to all Soviet fighters of that generation included poor quality hydraulics, opaque acrylics that reduced visibility from the cockpit, armament that was prone to failure, and very poor construction quality. Despite these problems, it passed its trials and production began on the 9th of December 1940. To mitigate some of these flaws, the Lag 3 kept increasing in weight, and the first production aircraft were capable of doing 50 km per hour less than the prototypes. By June 1941, at the start of the German invasion, more than 100 Lag 3s had been built. All units operating Lag 3s were far from the front line and escaped the initial onslaught. Partially due to this, at the end of 1941 there was a small period where the Lag 3 was the most common new generation Soviet fighter, ahead of the Yak-1 and MiG-3. Despite the bad reputation, the Lag 3 had some qualities. It was incredibly sturdy and quite fire resistant. It also had a very good armament in the first variant. Initially it was planned to have one 20mm cannon and four machine guns, too light and too heavy. This was one of the reasons for its heavy weight and gradually the armament was reduced to one 20mm cannon and only one heavy machine gun, going from a heavy armament to a light one. In fact some Soviet pilots achieved very good results and a few even became aces while flying it. One example of early success was the results achieved by the 21st Fighter Aviation Regiment in October 1941. Within six days, the regiment shot down 23 German aircraft, losing only seven in return. In addition, the Lag 3 achieved success as a bomber interceptor, where its hard flying characteristics mattered less. Some regiments used a tactic where other fighters engaged enemy escorts while the Lag 3s went for the bombers. Nevertheless, during this phase of the war, German air superiority was almost indisputable, and more often than not, Lag 3s were used in aerial combat, where they proved to be inferior to the German Messerschmitt Bf 109, especially the F variant. So, the Lag 3 became unpopular among Soviet pilots. It even earned a very negative nickname among Soviet airmen, Guaranteed Varnished Coffin, a wordplay with the Lag initials although this remark seems to have appeared only after the end of the war. Despite the Lag 3 being easier to fly than its contemporary MiG-3, it was still hard to master for an inexperienced pilot, and in less experienced regiments it had a high accident rate. In comparison, the Yak-1, another contemporary design, was more pilot-friendly and had fewer mishaps. By mid-1942 there was a similar number of Lag 3s and Yak-1s on the front lines, but from that point on, Lag 3 numbers gradually diminished, Lavochkin and Gorbunov constantly improved upon the design, and eventually, by 1943, the Lag 3's performance was what it should have been from the start. But naturally, the Germans weren't idle either, and the Lag 3 always lagged behind German fighters. Lag 3 production stopped in 1944, with a total of 6528 built. Still, the Soviet fighter saw action until the end of the war. It was even present in the brief war between Japan and the Soviet Union in the closing days of the conflict. 
In the meantime, the problems with the design had made Lavochkin fall out of favor with Stalin. He had done everything he could to keep the lag tree on the assembly lines, and that had included several changes to the power plant, as he knew that the lag tree above all was underpowered. During the winter of 1941, working in a small hut near an airfield, in an unofficial capacity, Lavochkin looked for a solution. In early 1942, Lavochkin's bureau fitted a Shevtsov M82 radial engine on a lag tree. This eventually became the LA-5, one of the best Soviet fighters of the war. Almost every aspect of the lag tree changed during its lifespan. As such, this won't be a complete list of all the changes. We will only cover the main modifications in armament, power plant and structure. Outside the scope is the Series 11, a ground attack variant that could carry 6 RS-82 or 132 rockets. The Series 23 with an improved rudder, or the Series 34 with a large 37mm cannon instead of the regular 20mm. Lag 3 Series 1 The original Lag 3 had a Klim of M105P engine with a centrifugal two-speed two-stage supercharger that could develop 1050 horsepower. It had two 7.62mm SHKAS machine guns and three 12.7mm Berezin UB machine guns, all in the nose. Series 4 The UB machine gun firing through the propeller hub was replaced by a 20mm SHVAK cannon. The right UBS machine gun was removed to lighten the aircraft. Series 8 from the 7th series on, the Klimov M105 PA engine was fitted. It had a floatless carburetor that allowed smoother operation during aerobatics, but the power produced was unchanged. In the 8th series, the two 7.62mm SHKAS machine guns were considered superfluous and were removed to save weight. Despite some experiments along the way, this became the standard armament of the Lag 3. Series 29 the engine was changed to the more powerful Klimov M105PF that could develop in excess of 1200 horsepower. Thanks to this new engine, from the 29th series onward, the Lag 3 was faster and had a better climb rate. Series 35 Automatic leading edge slats were installed, improving the aircraft's handling. A retractable tailwheel was also fitted, reducing drag. Series 66 The last production series. An improved lightweight frame made it more than 100 kg lighter than its predecessors and gave it the best performance of all the mass-produced Lag 3 variants. We will now compare the Lag 3 Ford series to the Messerschmitt Bf109 F2. The reference period is the start of the German invasion. As we can see, the Lag 3 was quite a bit heavier than the Bf109 but had a larger wing surface. By dividing one value by the other, we get the wing loading, which tells us a great deal about their turnability. The values for the wing loading are quite similar. There is a degree of uncertainty in some of these values, and weight decreases constantly as fuel and ammo are spent. Regardless, it seems that the Lag 3 had a small advantage here. In this category, there was no comparison. The BF109 F2 had a more powerful engine and a lower weight. This gave it a considerable advantage over the Soviet fighter. Another category where the German fighter had an important advantage was speed. Combined with its superior ability in the vertical plane, German pilots were able to pick when and how to fight, assuming they weren't surprised. In armament, the legs of early production had an advantage. Although Soviet pilots joked that the 7.62mm machine guns were only good enough to remove paint from German aircraft, the Lag 3 had a higher caliber cannon and one more heavy machine gun. Both planes had a similar range. Sealing in the Soviet front was mostly unimportant in fighter engagements, but the Bf109 could reach much higher. On the resilience side, it probably was a lag victory, as it seems that it was so rugged that several Soviet pilots used it in ramming attacks, and many survived to tell the tale, unlike their victims. On the overall quality and handling, it is a clear German win. In short, this comparison shows us the hardships Soviet pilots went through in the early part of the Great Patriotic War, and why numerous Soviet pilots disliked the Lag 3. But there were some that had great success with the type, as we will see up next in the Notable Pilots section.
Leonid Galshenko was a Soviet pilot who was possibly the greatest supporter of the Lag 3. When Germany invaded, he was flying the I-16, and by the time his unit received the Lag 3 in August 1941, he had achieved a single victory. His first experience with the fighter was a negative one. While landing, his landing gear collapsed. Still, on August 9, he shot down a Ju-88. Success continued and on September 15 he became an ace after shooting down three Ju-87s. By the end of September he already had eight confirmed victories. He was nominated Hero of the Soviet Union, but he didn't accept it until Mironov, his wingman who had saved his life several times, was also bestowed with the honor, which eventually happened. His leg three had a mark that would become very famous the drawing of a cat on the tail fin. He denied any superstition, but remarked that the cat brought him luck. Galshenko fought until the end of the war, later switching to the more modern LA-5. He would end with 24 individual victories and 12 shared, accumulated over 310 sorties. Superstition or not, it seems the cat did give him some luck, as he was never shot down during the war. The Lag 3 was a contentious fighter. It took the design team almost two years to make it what it was aimed to be from the start. And by then, it was already too late. Still, it held a very important role in the Soviet war against Germany, as it filled the ranks of frontline units while production of the more successful Yak-1 wasn't enough to meet demand. In particular, because the Lag 3 had a very small need for key strategic materials. But possibly the most important legacy of the Lag 3 was that, through it, the design team was able to develop the LA-5, one of the best Soviet fighters of the war. What is your opinion on the Lag 3? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe. Your support is highly appreciated.